In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the MCAT exam. The MCAT stands for the Medical College Admission Test. It is offered by the American Association of Medical Colleges, or the AAMC. Pre-medical students looking to attend medical school in the United States or Canada should plan on taking the MCAT exam. So to start, let's go over the format of the exam. As you can see here, the MCAT has four sections, and I have the abbreviations here the chem phys section, the car section, the bio, bio chem section, and the psych soch section. Each of these sections are about 90 minutes long. If you include the breaks between these sections, as well as a 30 minute lunch break between the first two and the last two sections, you'll find that your test date is about seven and a half hours long. This is a very long exam and one that most students aren't used to. So definitely an exam that you don't want to take without extensive preparation. Next, the MCAT is a computer-based test. So you'll take this exam in front of a computer. It's also a multiple choice test. So that means there are no free response questions. This is good to keep in mind because many of the courses that you've taken in preparation for the exam usually had exams that were not multiple choice. If you think about general chemistry, organic chemistry, or physics, you often had a lot of questions where you had to draw out molecules, or draw arrow pushing mechanisms, or draw free body diagrams with long calculations. That's not what you're going to see on the MCAT, so it's good to keep in mind that the way you were tested on science content in college is going to be a bit different from the way that these topics are tested on the MCAT. Next, the MCAT has a combination of passage-based questions and freestanding questions. Freestanding questions are standalone questions, and they're usually memory-based, just asking if you have this fact memorized or if you know this concept. Passage-based questions are questions that are associated with a passage, and these questions are what make the MCAT a particularly difficult standardized exam. The passages are going to introduce new situations and information that you have not learned about before. And in order to answer these passage-based questions, you're going to have to be able to apply your knowledge of science to the passage information. And this can be difficult for many students. So to get better at this, you definitely want to do lots of practice questions and practice tests before your actual exam. All right. So the last thing I want to mention is that the MCAT is only offered between the months of January through September each year. This is important to keep in mind as you think about when you want to take the MCAT. And as you know, the MCAT is an exam you want to take before you apply for medical school. And most students are going to apply for medical school during the summer. So usually it's recommended that you take the MCAT by April or May of the spring before the summer you're going to apply for medical school. If you want to take the MCAT before that, like January of that spring, or even the year before, that's completely fine. But just keep in mind, these are the only months of the year that the MCAT is offered. All right, so next let's talk about how the MCAT is scored. As you can see here, each of the four sections is scored between 118 to 132. So 118 is the lowest score that you can get, and 132 is the highest score. As you can see here, the score distribution follows a normal distribution. So that means most students are going to be close to the middle, or a 125, and very few students are going to be getting a very high score, as well as a very low score. And the scoring system is actually very convenient for medical school admissions committees, and that's because if it, the average score on a section of the exam is 125, that means if you multiply these numbers by four, the average score for the entire exam is 500. This makes it very easy for admissions committee members to look at an MCAT score and see if the student is above average, meaning they scored above 500, or if they're below average and scored below 500. Now, in terms of what is a good target score to aim for, you're going to want to take a closer look at the medical schools you want to attend. You're going to want to look at the average GPA as well as the average MCAT of those schools. All right, so now let's look at each of the four sections of the exam in more detail. 
The first section is the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems. The section is 30% general chemistry, 25% biochemistry, 25% physics, 15% organic chemistry, and 5% biology. What makes the ChemPhys section very challenging is the broad range of subjects that are tested. If you think about it, in college, you usually took general chemistry in your first year, and the next semester or the next year, you would take organic chemistry. If you think about the amount of content that you needed from your general chemistry course to do well in your organic chemistry course, it wasn't much. Right? General chemistry was very quantitative. You were doing all these stoichiometry or pH calculations, and then you switch over to organic chemistry where you're just drawing all these molecules and arrow pushing diagrams. So in college, these different classes or subjects are often treated almost separate from each other. But that's not going to be the case on the MCAT exam. On an MCAT passage in the chem phys section, you might have a couple general chemistry questions, a couple organic chemistry, and even a biochemistry question. So you can't think of these subjects as being entirely separate, and you have to be able to think about these subjects and how they are related with each other. Okay. Now, other things I want to mention is, in addition to taking these courses, the lecture courses, you also want to take the lab courses. And that's because lab techniques are tested on the exam as well. So as an example, for general chemistry, you certainly need to know about acid-based titrations. For organic chemistry, you need to know about thin layer chromatography. In biochemistry, if you've done Western blots or SDS page, that certainly will help too. Okay. The second section is the critical analysis and reasoning skills section. For now, I'm actually gonna skip this because this section is a bit different from the other three science sections. So let's take a look at the third section, which is the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, or the bio-biochem section for short. This section is 65% biology, 25% biochemistry, 5% general chemistry, and 5% organic chemistry. As you can see, this section is very heavy on biology. Now, the biology on this section is split. It's about half of the topics are covering the small stuff, like genetics, molecular biology, and the other half are focused on physiology. So looking at the organ systems, the nervous system, the endocrine system, the digestive system, and so forth. In college, you're going to need to take general biology as a prerequisite for applying to medical school and also for the MCAT. The unfortunate news is that general biology usually does not go through these topics in the amount of detail you're going to see on the exam. So if you are able to take additional courses in biology, advanced or upper division courses in biology, that's definitely going to help. So certainly, if you can take a physiology course, a genetics course, a cell biology course, a microbiology course, or really just any advanced biology course, that's gonna give you an advantage on this section. All right, now, the other thing to take note is, if you're looking at these natural science subjects, you're going to notice that the most tested subject is biology, and that shouldn't be a surprise, all right? If you want to become a physician, you definitely need to know lots of biology. But if you're adding up the percentages for these other subjects, you'll notice that the second most tested subject is actually biochemistry, right? You have 25% biochemistry in both the chem phys and the bio, bio chem section. That's a total of 50%, and that's more than general chemistry, physics, or organic chemistry. This is very important to take note because biochemistry is often a course that is hard for pre-med students to take early on. And that's usually because before you take biochemistry, you need to take organic chemistry. And before organic chemistry, you need to take general chemistry. But since biochemistry is such a high yield topic on the exam, this is a course that you really want to be able to take before you take the MCAT exam. So try to keep that in mind as you're considering when you're taking the MCAT to make sure you can schedule your courses in such a way that you can cover biochemistry before the MCAT. All right. The last section is the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior. You can see that it's 65% psychology, 30% sociology, and 5% biology. 
The psychology and sociology are just introductory level, so you don't need to take any advanced courses. Intro to psych, intro to soci is sufficient. I also want to mention that there are a lot of pre-medical students that aren't able to fit psychology and sociology in their schedule before studying for NAMCAT, and that's completely fine, all right? And that's because psychology and sociology, the way that these topics are tested on the exam is mostly memory-based. So that means if you're good at memorizing terms and concepts, then you're probably going to be okay in the psych social section without having taken the courses before. But for other subjects like organic chemistry or biochemistry, it's much harder to do well in those questions without having to taken the courses before. All right, so now let's go back to the second section. And again, the critical analysis and reasoning skills section. The section is unique in that it doesn't test any prior knowledge of content. So you don't need to know anything about the humanities or social studies. You really are gonna be tested on your critical analysis and reasoning skills. Now, in terms of the passages you're gonna see on the exam, uh, about half the passages are gonna be on humanities topics and half of the passages are gonna be on social studies topics. The types of questions you're gonna see are 30% foundations of comprehension, 30% reasoning within the text, and 40% reasoning beyond the text. This is good for you to keep in mind to think about what do I need to be able to do to score well on the car section? So certainly the foundations of comprehension is really just asking, did you understand the text? Reasoning within the text is asking you to do a bit of analysis. So not really taking the text at face value, but being able to infer some information about the text or how the text was written by the author. The last is reasoning beyond the text. In these questions, they'll often expect you to extrapolate uh, passage information to new situations, or they're going to introduce new information and ask you how that's going to affect the arguments that are made in the passage text. Okay, so these are the four different sections of the exam, and that is an overview of the MCAT.